Miles Boykin, you are a New York Giant. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. We have some roster news to discuss on today's show as the Giants have signed wide receiver and special team specialist Miles Boykin to a contract. But to close today's show, we got to break down what Darren Waller said to The Athletic about his future and if he will play this year with the Giants and when he may come to a decision on if he is going to retire or not. That's around the corner. But first, make sure you are subscribed because this is why you subscribe. When the Giants make a move, we make a video. They sign Miles Boykin, we're making a video. Sub for Giants Dubs and help us get to 46,000 subscribers. We're just under 200 away and we need your help. Help us get there by the NFL Draft. All right, so the Giants have come to terms and signed Miles Boykin an NFL free agency. We're going to break down Boykin as a player. We'll tell you what he does on the football field and what this ultimately means for the Giants. He was a third-round pick back in the 2019 NFL Draft by the Baltimore Ravens, and he was a Raven from 2019 to 2021, and that is where he had the most success as a wide receiver in the NFL. Then he went and played with the Pittsburgh Steelers for the past two years and only has one start at that wide receiver position. That is really where he became one of the best special teams gunners in the league. You see last year, only three receptions for 17 yards and his long catch was six yards. But the thing that a lot of people love about him, and I don't know how you can, is the size. At six foot four, 220 pounds, and he is an absolute athletic freak. Came out of Notre Dame as well. This was his RAS score back at the 2019 NFL Combine, and my oh my, have we come a long way, and have they come a long way with their graphics. He graded out in the 99th percentile of all wide receivers when it comes to athletic ability at the 2019 Combine. Came in at six foot three and a half, 220 pounds, ran a 4 4 40, threw up 225 pounds 12 times on the bench press, but he had a 43 and a half inch vertical. 99.99 percentile, a broad jump of over 11 feet, a good short shuttle, a great three cone drill. He is an absolute athletic monster, 33 and a half inch arms. That is why he is able to get downfield so fast and be so effective when covering kicks and punts. As a receiver, though, it's really been a tale of two careers, which really never have lived up to the hype of being that third round pick at a Notre Dame in 2019. Started off his career in this year, 13 receptions, just 198 yards with the Baltimore Ravens. Did have three touchdowns, and the next year got a little bit more usage, 19 grabs for almost 270 yards, four more touchdowns then, but has not yet touched the end zone on a catch yet in his career since 2020 and only has six catches in the next three football seasons. So now you get a look at the Giants' depth chart when it comes to the wide receiver position. And this is where I think we will ultimately stand prior to the NFL draft. You got Jalen Hyatt hoping for him to have a better year in year two and have a quarterback that will throw him the ball downfield and hit him in stride. I think Darius Slayton is going to continue to be a solid producer for this football team. I'm expecting Wandale Robinson to be the best success story of this depth chart. I think he's going to have a great year out of the slot. You brought back Isaiah Hodgins on a one-year deal. Will you get anything out of Bryce for Wheaton as he comes back from a torn ACL? Gunnar Olszewski is your putt returner and kick returner. You signed veteran Isaiah McKenzie early on in free agency to compete to make this roster and maybe give you some veteran, veteran leadership as well. You got Chase Coda and Dennis Houston, who are guys that were on the practice squad. And now you add Miles Boykin and NFL free agency to round out this room before we get to the NFL draft. I've got more on Boykin in a second and Waller around the corner, but I want to hear from you. What is your one-word reaction to the Miles Boykin signing? Let me know down in the comment section. For me, brother, it's special teams, special plays, special players. And that is where Miles Boykin is going to produce and have the most success with the New York Giants this year. Shout out to my guy, Sketch. Look at what Boykin has done so far in his career in the special teams department. These numbers come from Pro Football Focus. They show his snap totals and his grades. And he has over 933 career special team snaps. 330 of those come on kickoff return. 248 come off come on kickoff coverage. Punt return, he's got 157 snaps and also 198 snaps when it comes to punt coverage. And the Giants coming off of last year where you fired your special teams coordinator, you got a new special teams coordinator, 
You need guys that are good in that area. It takes complimentary football to win games on Sunday. Giants didn't do a lot of that last year, and that's why they didn't win a lot of football games. They were ranked 24th in the NFL by pro football focus. You have bring a guy back like Gunnar Olszewski. You bring in Miles Boykin. You're adding people that have had success on that part of the football field and that part of the game, and I like that. Glad that Miles Boykin is going to be a giant and hopefully continue the success he's had on special teams with this football team next year. Coming up around the corner, Darren Waller sat down with Vic Tafer of The Athletic, and he gave an answer to when he might make a decision on if he's going to play football or retire. That's around the corner, but right now i got to tell you guys about our proud sponsor, Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America. Check them out at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that promo code CLNS, and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. Win big money when you pick more or you pick Less. I got an NBA lineup rolling here on a Wednesday, or let's say Thursday. What's today? Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Producer Jack Lottere fell right into that one. You choose more or less, and I've got the more on Jalen Brunson points, and I've also got the more on DeMar DeRozan field goal attempts. Oh, my goodness. Uh, DeRozan's going to have to be the offense tonight for the Bulls as there's some injuries to Caruso, Io DeSumo, and Kobe White. You can roll with my picks or fade my picks, but I kindly ask if you're going to play daily fantasy sports, <clears throat> you do it with our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS promo code CLNS. All that information will be down in the comments and description. All righty, let's close out the show talking about veteran tight end Darren Waller and what we have now learned about the decision he may or may not make when it comes to being a giant next season. Let's just dive into it because I've got some thoughts on this. Waller said this to Tafer in The Athletic. I have to make a decision at some point. Yes, you do, Darren. You have to be 100% bought in for the grind. And I have to make sure I am bringing that to the table or it is a disservice to the guys I am suiting up with. I also want to give the team time where whichever way I go, they can prepare for next season. So it's a little bit of a difficult decision, but here we are. And I am a mixed bag of emotions when it comes to Darren Waller and what is ongoing. Because I do appreciate the fact that he is taking into account if he is not 100% bought in, it will be a disservice to his teammates. So I appreciate that from Darren Waller. But I am also upset that the Giants just gave up a third round pick for a guy that they got 12 games out of, and he's holding up the roster additions and ways to attack the future with us pretty much being held hostage by his decision. We didn't get the salary cap relief to use in free agency because we didn't have a decision, and it sounds like we may not even have one by the draft. But he is staying in shape, which tells me that he may just come back and play. Tafer also noted that where he did this interview was when Darren Waller was working out with uh, tight ends that are coming into the 2024 NFL draft. Jatavian Sanders was one of them. He was helping them with the route running. He was also working out with them. So I think that's a good sign if you are in the camp that you want Waller to come back. Really make a decision before the draft, though, because that's all I really care about at this point. You already kind of screwed us a little bit in free agency. We weren't able to attack the tight end position with the $7 million we would get if you did retire. So will he give a decision by the draft so we can maybe go draft a guy like Jatavian Sanders? Waller said this. Well, that would be ideal. But I also don't want to put that on myself. It's got to be before summer break for sure. Oh, Lord. Whether it's now, whether it's next week, whether it's next season, Darren Waller is not the tight end of the future for the New York Giants. Whether he's back next year or not, the Giants need to attack the NFL draft that if there is someone at the tight end position that they have ranked at the top of their big board or above the slots that they are picking, they should select that player because tight end is still a need on this football team. Here are some of the salary cap implications for Waller if he does or does not retire. Um, well, if you cut him, which is pretty much the same thing as if he retires. Prior to June 1st, you save $6.7 million, and you have a dead cap hit of 7.3. million. 
if Waller informs you that he's going to retire, I would just tell him, hey, you know what? Hold up. We'll just make you a post-June 1st cut. That way we save $11.6 million in cap space, and we have a dead cap hit at $2.4 million, and then you could take this entire $11.6 million and make that the money that you use to sign your draft picks. So either save $7 million or potentially $11.6. Um, will you make a decision? I don't know. It's pretty frustrating at this point just like Waller kind of was for the Giants last year. It always seemed like he was just a day late and a dollar short of making a big play. Played the most games in a season that he had in a while, but he still only played 12. Had 52 grabs for 552 yards, over 10 yards per catch. Did have that touchdown from Tyrod, Tyrod Taylor attacking the seam. At one point, he was the number one tight end when it came to yards, but then the injuries kind of fell, came, and then his production kind of fell off after that. So you look at where this tight end room sits. You got Waller. You got Bellinger. You got Chris Manhurts, who signed from the Broncos. He is a blocking tight end. So is Jack Stoll, who came from the Eagles. He's a blocking tight end. And you also got Tyree Jackson, who came into the NFL as a quarterback and is really just a project player at this point. So if Waller is out, that means Daniel Bellinger has to step in as the number one tight end for this football team. Played 11 games in 2022, 13 games in 2023, had 30 grabs his rookie year, almost 270 yards, just under 9 yards per catch. Had two touchdowns and a PFF run block grade of 61.5. And then in 2023, where he kind of played that second tight end spot to Darren Waller, his usage cut down a little bit, his opportunities cut down a little bit. Um, I think Ballinger is a good player. There's no doubt about it. I like the grit and grind he plays with. I think he's one tough SOB. I'm just not so sure if he is ready to be a tight end number one, in which we are hoping is an improved offense that has more explosive plays. So I'll ask you, can, Dar uh, can Daniel Bellinger be a tight end one? Type Y for yes, type N for no. For me, when it comes to Bellinger, I just simply like him more as a tight end two. I think his skill set fits that position and what that position requires a little bit more. It's not a knock to him. I just want someone that's more of a prototypical receiving tight end. Bellinger, he's got his foot in both ponds. He can block at a pretty well level. He can also be a decent receiving threat. So I want to keep him on this team. I like the versatility he brings. And I also would like to see a tight end and Daniel Bellinger on the football field together to run out of those personnel groupings. I just want someone that's a little bit more athletic, can stretch the field, and puts a little bit more pressure on defensive coordinators when game planning for the Giants at the tight end position. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. News of the day, Miles Boykin has signed with the Giants. And Darren Waller speaks on his potential retirement. Make sure you are following me over on social media at Marshall Green underscore on Twitter, as well as at Marshall Green underscore on Instagram. If you haven't yet, please, please, please hit that thumbs up icon on your way out.